my wife finished her glass of wine and poured a second glass as we sat on our terrace enjoying the beautiful spring evening. I let out a large cloud of cold smoke and watched it flutter in the wind. I'm not going to Chicago next month, Joe. I looked at her in surprise, for the last ten years, she'd gone shopping in Chicago twice a year, one on Memorial Day and the other the weekend after Thanksgiving. She liked to spend my money on the Magnificent Mile or wherever else the fashionistas went shopping in those days. Why is that? She looked away. I just don't feel like doing it. Since the kids are away from home for college, I thought we could take a trip together. I shrugged, that's sweet, Chelsea, but I'd already booked a golf trip to South Carolina. On the day she went shopping in Chicago, I always went somewhere to play golf. Truth be told, I knew her trips to Chicago weren't just for shopping. She had a lover who took her shopping twice a year under the pretense of going to Chicago. She was completely faithful to me for the rest of the year. Believe me. I checked it out thoroughly. I shouldn't have been surprised that she had no intention of leaving now. Her lover had been killed in a botched robbery attempt on his jewelry store the month before. The idiot should have just let the guy take what he wanted and live the rest of his life. This asshole thought he could pull a gun and kill the robber. No, the good guy with the gun got shot in the head before he shot the bad guy with the gun. He wasn't such a good guy, though. After all, he was fucking my wife, well, maybe you could cancel your trip. I shook my head negatively. I'll go with you then, I don't think my golf partner would like that. Who are you going with? She asked and was struck by the realization that she had never asked who I was traveling with before. The time had come. I decided I would end the charade she'd started with her lover years ago. With Aaron, she dropped her glass. Luckily, we used plastic glasses when we drank outside. That didn't stop the expensive Chardonnay from spilling on the table. Aaron. She whispered. My best friend, Aaron. I nodded and took another puff of my cigar. A tear rolled down her cheek. How long has she been traveling with you on your trips? I sighed since the very first time. She tried to hide her emotions, but failed miserably. Do you have a constant connection with her? No. Not constant. I admitted. We only get together twice a year. We kept each other company while you traveled to Chicago with her husband. Her tears grew larger and she fought back sobs. Her hands shook as she tried to pour more wine. I took the bottle and poured it for her. You knew from the beginning. Yes, I nodded and took a deep breath. I was ready to talk, but I thought she would try to cover up her cheating by continuing the trip this year. Refusing to go after the death of her lover was a big red flag, but I'm not going anymore. She pleaded. As a matter of fact, Aaron and I had discussed stopping as well. In fact, everything changed at Alan's funeral it was when you had a fit of sobs at his casket, when you slammed your fist on the coffin and screamed, why God? Why, that's when we decided to keep our plans to travel together. I don't remember that. I shrugged. You probably don't remember much from that day at all. That's not surprising. Considering the bottle of wine you finished before we left the house, the four martinis you had at lunch and how many more you had at home afterward so you passed out pretty early. I didn't mean to disrespect you. I laughed. Really? Forget the funeral. You slept with your best friend's husband for ten years, but you didn't mean to disrespect me. You're delusional. How did you know? I noticed she didn't apologize or ask for my forgiveness. Oh, that was easy. He told his wife that there was a diamond show in Chicago that he was going to attend the first time. It was actually a happy accident that Aaron mentioned to me that he would be out of town I'm not sure if you remember. But we invited them over for a barbecue. You ordered more drinks, and he went to the bathroom. Aaron was just making small talk with me. My wife shook her head incredulously. Yes, and as soon as she said he was going to Chicago, I told her about your shopping trip to Chicago. She was surprised you didn't invite her to join you. And at that moment, we realized why you didn't. I thought we were so good at hiding things. Alan traveled so much. I shrugged. No, 
you were actually quite careless. You should have picked a place where there was actually a diamond show, and to think that you could go traveling on the same weekend as her husband twice a year, every year, and not set off alarms in our heads was just silly, you never said anything. We thought everything was fine. That's just your arrogance and disrespect. Neither you nor Alan bothered to ask who Aaron and I went on our trips with, it really shook us up. You cared so little about it that you never wondered what your stupid spouse was up to, that's not true. She said quietly. We talked about what you were doing, it never occurred to us that you were leaving together. That's funny, chills, we thought we'd been caught three years ago. Your flights were delayed. She frowned. I nodded. She added, we stayed another day. And it never occurred to me that you were both delayed overnight because of the blizzard, would you believe Aaron and I were worried and almost cancelled our Memorial Day trip next year? But you and Alan acted like nothing happened and went on with your plans as usual. What now, Joe? That's a good question. Frankly, after the way you embarrassed me at the funeral, I intend to get a divorce, she gasped. Oh, don't act so surprised, loving wife, Aaron and I put up with your liaisons because we comforted each other while you broke your vows, I never imagined you would fall in love with this, this piece of shit. It didn't happen right away, I'm so sorry. She broke down sobbing and rushed into the house. I texted Aaron all clarified, her response was immediate. I'm waiting. I put my phone in my pocket and my cigar in the ashtray and took a deep breath. Chelsea wasn't the only one falling for her steady lover. It was time to organize the rest of my life, and Chelsea wasn't meant to be there. 